So today is now tomorrow and you can see that it has actually been turned down to a very worrying degree. Uh, I think it had about 1.5 mil taken off of it and now it fits very snugly in the actual bucket seat itself. Uh, I'd take some down on the actual size as well because they flayed out. I don't know how well you can see that, but to make sure it's parallel all the way down, I had to take a fair bit off, which has made it a little bit loose here. So I probably will recommend for the inlet side anyway. This is perfect for the exhaust side because it's got a lovely valve seat. It's got that lovely like seat here itself for the top of the valve spring follower or holder to uh, hold itself onto obviously um, but the, the, the smaller side obviously for the inlet isn't isn't small enough so if you didn't have access to a lathe this is going to be difficult so as good as this sealy tool is I'd recommend it well recommend it for the exhaust side for the actual inlet side I can't really recommend it so I found another one on the forums and it's a motorbike uh, valve spring compressor kit uh, I've been assured by people on the forum itself that it works on the 1820 valve turbo engine. Uh, I think it's about £10, I'm not sure. I, th I think it's about £10. Uh, I'm not sure if it ships to the US, but it's it's probably going to be well worth the investment. This this Sealy one, I think, was about £40, £50. Pounds. Uh, so if you could possibly get away with using the motorbike one on the actual exhaust side. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to buy it and then see if it's any good uh, replacing them as well. Because if, if it's ten pounds, I might as well get it. And see if it's any good, uh, and it'll probably, well, it will hopefully stop any of you lot wasting your money on things that you don't need. Instead, I will waste the money for you and let you know whether or not it is took. But anyway, this has been turned down. This can actually remove valves. The proof is over here. I don't know if you can see, all three of these inlet valves are now out. There's the actual top themselves. I did these off camera. They are over here and bagged up. Obviously they're exhaust ones. They are one and two and three for the inlet. Same kind of deal, but this is a very tight fit. A very tight fit. These two outer ones aren't that bad. It's this middle one that's really difficult, and it's difficult removing them. I'm having to use a magnetic sort of screw, well, a magnetic screwdriver to actually get the collets off and then pull them out because the access is so limited. So it's going to be very interesting trying to get them back in and actually have them seat in the actual retainer properly. So that that's going to be interesting. But the actual aim for this video is obviously to remove all of the remaining six inlets and also I need to remove all of these studs these hold the actual cam cover on itself so they all need to be removed a little technique here I use three bolts I use two big M6s and one sort of half nut you tighten them against each other and then it'll pull the stud out you have to hold one in tension one will pull one one way just hold one the other way and they pull out but I'll show you that in a minute so Let's start taking these six inlets out. And then what I'll do, I'll flip the actual head on the bench so you can see the actual head face or, or the actual top of the actual cylinder itself and see the actual head with no valves in it. And then I'll explain what I'm planning to do via reporting and polishing all the inlets and the actual inside the actual combustion chamber itself. So first thing first, let's crack on with the valves and then I'll explain what I need to explain. Right, so the removal of the actual inlet valves is exactly the same as the exhaust valves, just there's three of them and not two of them and they're bloody tiny. I've already set the spring compressor up from last time, so all I've got to do is just thread it on. I like to get it so it's parallel, so it's facing that way along with the actual back of the spring compressor. Once again, bottom one goes on the bottom of the valve. That goes on the actual retainer itself. And 
I said, it's a very tight fit. It's a very cold evening tonight. So, it's really not helping me. So that's it. That's how tight it is. That's how it's sitting in the actual retainer itself. Just inside there, on the very edge of my finger now, is the actual collet we have to take out. If you come underneath, you'll see it's sitting on the valve. You can see the other two to the right hand side, there's the middle one and the right hand side one. This is the left hand side one. So all this basically does is just push the actual spring down, you get the collets out, and then you can release the tension, pull the follow out, push the valve out, and there you go. Now what I'm doing down here is basically just turning the actual threaded rod itself to push up and therefore close the gap between the actual two arms of the spring compressor, therefore compressing the spring. So again, you can remove the collet. This top one doesn't need any adjustment, I'm just trying to get it out of the way. compressed as far as I need to compress it I could probably do it some more but I don't need to so I'm just going to change the camera angle and I'll show you what's actually happened there's the valve spring under tension you can see the two collets holding onto the valve itself it's only gone down by about 10 mil or so probably less than that but that's all you need or that's all I need to do to get to the collet I just have to repeat that, yeah, another eight times to get them all out. Obviously, all the exhaust ones are out, these three inlets are out. It is simply just removing these, and then this head is basically stripped. It's completely bare after that. Let's go on with it. Now, there's not a lot to see at this point because it's simply just putting a screwdriver down there, a magnetic one, because I don't know how else I'd get them out. I should really invest in an actual magnet on a stick, but this will do for now. Literally just got to pop the collet off. And there is the tip of the screwdriver. Try not to drop it on the floor because I'll probably never find it. There is the second collet right here. It's quite hard to see because they are really very small. It's just a grooved piece of metal with a taper on it. So now that's out, or now both of them are out, this valve is technically not held in with anything. So all I have to do is simply back it off like I have done before and the valve will be free to come out the bottom of the head. Now it's no longer a tension, I can pull this handle and slowly pull that out. There's the actual retainer itself, and these are what the collets sit in. Because they're tapered, they won't go. They won't ever go anywhere because they physically can't. Again, spring, and then finally, pull for the bottom of the head, and you have a. In the valve. Now they are much smaller than exhaust valves because there's three of them. You'll see a little bit of 
farm and build up near the stem. Now, as I understand it, this actual stem here is super finished, and that's so the seal has a long life. This bit here down, where you can see the carbon sticking to, and it tapers down. This is okay to wire wheel or to polish. This actual shank here, you do not want to touch with anything. Sandpaper, nothing like that, because it's super finished to a very, very high standard, and you're not gonna polish it better than it is already polished. If it's damaged, then you need to replace the valve. But, as far as I'm aware, from this bit down is game to polish from anything up, anything that's going to interact with a seal, don't bother, don't waste your time, because as far as I'm aware, and from what I've told and what I've read, is you're doing more harm than good. So, these are going to be left, these inlets are going back into the engine, as far as I'm aware. If they are good, they will be checked. They, they look okay, inlets are normally pretty good on this engine. They will need to be reground in because the faces look too great. I may actually need new valve seats, I don't know yet. Again, it's completely up to inspection. Uh, this is just stripped down at the moment. When we actually inspect things, if things need replacing, they will be replaced because there's no point in half arsing a job. But yeah, that's your valve, that's your spring, that's your retainer. Your two collets sit in these grooves here. Now these are triple grooved valves, as you can see here you've got as you can see here you've got three grooves in the valve. This is a ruler for scale. Those grooves are probably about five mil. So half a centimeter of grooves you have there, and they're probably one or two millimeters per groove. Now, an upgrade to these valves would be a single groove valve. That is something that is happening on the exhaust side because having one, 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 or maybe 1.2 mil of material times three, that's all well and good. But a single groove one will have like four mil of material. So instead of having three grooves interact with it, it'll have one massive groove to interact with it. So therefore it'll hold it better because there's more material there to wear away. These can wear away and I have seen them wear away on other engines. Not, not 1.8s, 1.8 is pretty good for it, but other engines I've seen and these have cracked or these are worn or they don't look great. So a free grooved valve isn't terrible, it's, it's pretty good. It's good from a manufacturing point, but for uh, a better valve would be a uh, single groove which I'm going to go with on the actual exhaust side of this engine these are standard these are going back in pending whether they're good or not so that is the collet and this is the actual retainer itself if you look because it, it sits in there lovely and pretty and obviously the valve spring sits there like that and that is the actual valve assembly itself Again, these will be going in bags, like I did in the previous video with the exhaust ones. Now, as you can tell, I've labelled them inlets. The other ones are just called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Inlet 1 obviously differentiates. You can't get them mixed up because, end of the day, the inlet valves are tiny compared to the exhaust valve. So that's inlet 1 in this bag. This is inlet 4, because 1, 2, 3, 4. Same with the buckets, they correspond to each other. So that'll go back in the box over here, just off camera. Uh, I'll get another bag. I can push that back, I can label that. Inlet 4 and in goes the valve. I just now need to do it to the remaining valves in the head. Uh, I will film that but I will time lapse it because I don't want to bore your socks off. 
Anyway, while you're watching the time lapse, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are growing quite well at the moment. Uh, it's obviously Christmas time, so a lot of smaller channels like mine do tend to get buried due to the bigger channels bringing in more ad revenue for YouTube themselves. So at this time of year, support your friendly neighborhood YouTuber and subscribe. So as you can see, we have all the buckets, all the, all the exhaust valves, all the inlet valves, and all the inlet buckets over here, safe in the box. The head is now, for all intents and purposes, except for the bolt sticking out of it, fully stripped. There is nothing left in this component-wise. It is just a big block of aluminium. Well, dirty aluminium. The next thing we have to do, which I explained earlier, is remove these studs. Now, they are varying sizes, so I'm going to measure them and take a photo of where they are and where they go. So when they go back in, I know exactly where they go. I'm gonna do it off camera quickly for my own records, and then I'm going to pull these out and then flip the head onto its side so we can see how bare the head actually is. I thought I'd show you quickly what I'm doing. Basically got a ruler it next to the stud in question and then simply taking a photo on my phone so I know that stud sticks out by 4.5 centimeters now what I have here are three M6 nuts two of them are full nuts middle ones are half nut you basically lock them together so they can't move and so it makes it bites onto the stud and pulls it out of the head. Now these need to be removed because when it is machined and decked it needs to be flat and these obviously, well this one here that you can see at the moment, obviously get in the way of that so it needs removing. Again I'm going to put them in a little So that is all the studs out. 
there are some little dowels in here which have to come out as well but I'll do them in a little while. I haven't got a lot of battery left in my camera because it's freezing cold in here and I forgot to charge it so that's on me. Uh, let's quickly get the head on its side we can have a quick look and I'll end the video. What a fully stripped down head looks like. I have polished this cylinder up a little bit but you can see the others aren't looking too great you can see well some of the valve stems aren't looking too clever obviously that's the inlet side that's the exhaust side it's not looking as bad as I expected but this will now be thoroughly cleaned uh, before I start any polishing work or anything like that I'm gonna have it ultrasonically cleaned so we are starting on a good foundation that way I can see casting errors and things like that even better all of this combustion chambers will be completely polished. Uh, I've even seen pictures on the internet and I've even spoke to a few people who said you can actually get some, rid of some of this material here, therefore increasing the CC slightly of the actual cylinder itself. But I'll talk about that in a future video when I know a bit more about it, and know a bit more of the direction that I'm going to go in and how far I'm going to port or polish, well, how far I'm going to port and polish this engine. So, I think this video has gone on long enough. Thank you very much for watching. It's very well appreciated. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, and I will hopefully see you in another video. Take care.